Progression Church. Y'all make a little noise if you're excited to be here this morning. Yes. It is always fun to get together. Um, I hope you guys are ready for uh, just a, a word that the Lord has put on my heart that I think is going to be really good for us. Uh, as you guys know, we are continuing in our Colossians series. Have you guys been enjoying the Colossians series? Yeah? A little noise? A little noise for that? Yeah? Okay, so... So hopefully it's been helpful for you. We've talked about this before, but we want this to, to be a study through what, you know, what God wants to show us in the book of Colossians, but also we want this to be a kind of a lesson in how you walk through Scripture and study Scripture and, um, and, and just draw out the truth that, that God has laid there in His Word for us. Um, and so uh, to set up the context just a little bit, last week we talked about um, who Jesus was and why this is important in Paul's time and, and in his day. It was important because there were a group of spirituals known as the Gnostics, okay? And the Gnostics were challenging who Jesus was. And so they were this vague spiritual type. They believed in worship of, of all kinds of different things and objects. And, um, and they would challenge the Christian understanding of who Jesus is because Jesus is central to the Christian faith. And so you had this group of Christians in Colossae and they were dealing with this noise coming from this group. And so Paul sets out to define who Jesus is really is. And that's where we pick up in the book where Jesus is saying, okay, you're hearing these things about Jesus that are not accurate. So let's just kind of lay out how you should view Jesus, how you should understand Jesus, and that's going to help you to, to grow stronger in your faith. All right. And so before we get into what, what Paul tells us, there's more. The, last week we learned that Jesus is God, but we also learned that he is creator. So we learned that Jesus is creator God. And that because of that, he is preeminent over all things. He rules and reigns over everything. It's Jesus' world. We're just living in it. And so, before we continue with what Paul has to say further about Jesus, some really good stuff, and hopefully it's going to teach you, teach you a little bit more about him. You're going to learn something potentially new. Uh, before we get into that, I thought we should do something fun. All right. Now, how many of you guys have heard of Where is Waldo? Anybody? Yeah? Okay, cool. Most of you. That's great. All right. We're going to play a little game of Where is Waldo? And some of you are like, well, there he is, right? Nope, nope. Not that easy. Not that easy. All right. For those of you that sat in the back, this may not play well for you. I'm sorry. Okay. But I'm going to show you a picture. And I just want, for those of you who don't know, that's what Waldo looks like. Okay. He is that confident that he carries a cane on his shoulder. Doesn't even use it. Right. Um, so we are going to take just a minute or so, and I'm going to let you try and find where Waldo is. Okay. You guys ready? All right, here we go. See if you can find him. I don't know how high definition this projector is, but it seems like it's getting the job done. Okay, just slip your hand up when you find him. Don't tell your neighbor where he is. Ooh, we got somebody that found him. Keep on looking. Keep on. How many of you, raise your hand if you're like, this is impossible. I can't do this. Okay, several. All right, cool. You're honest. Okay, so he's in there. It's important that I at least described what he looked like to you, or we at least got to see an example of what he looked like. All right, you guys ready for the big reveal? He is in here, I promise. Okay, go ahead and show him. There he is at the very bottom. You see that little blur? All right. So what makes things complicated is he's got all kinds of camping gear on him. Your boy is about to hit the nature trail, okay? He's about to head out. He was at the very bottom. Um, and so the re you know, I just thought it would be fun to see if you could kind of land where he is and find where he is. Um, and, the, and the whole concept of Waldo is like for some of you just now, you're like, that wasn't fun at all. I didn't have a shot. I couldn't see him. Like, that was just a waste of my time, right? You got no enjoyment. There was no celebration for that moment you find him. The thrill of this type of, it's actually a book, or the thrill of this type of game is there's a celebration when you see him. There's a celebration, this excitement that comes around finding him and seeing him. And the reason that connects to what we're talking about today is at Progression Church, we believe there is a celebration that takes place as you see Jesus. In other words, when you see Jesus for who he is, you celebrate him for who he is. And so we want 
to help you to see more accurately who Jesus is. And so this is a phrase that I wrote down, and it kind of just carries the, these, the several weeks of Colossians we're going through, and it's this. You'll worship Jesus as well as you see him. You're only going to worship Jesus as well as you see him. So it's important that we see him accurately. It's important that we understand who Jesus is, the person of Jesus, so that we can worship him for who he is. And like I said last week, we understand that Jesus is God and he is creator. And then Paul continues from there. So let's look at Colossians 1.18. It says this, he, he is Jesus, he is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. Here's the first thing that we can know about Jesus and who he is. Is he rules over the church. It says that Jesus is the head of the church. And so we believe that Jesus rules over the church. That's what the first part of that verse says. And so when we think about church, typically our minds go to a building. Yes? That's what a lot of us do. A lot of times we'll associate church and going to church as a building. But it's actually, that's actually not it. In this passage, the church is a people. That the church is a collective, a group of people. I actually like the way um, Mary Wiley describes it. It says this, The church isn't just the word we use to describe the building we visit. Church is both the local body of Christ that gathers there and the universal community God has designed for those who follow him. So the church is a people. So understand, when you woke up this morning, you didn't wake up and then just come to church. When you woke up this morning, you are the church and you have gathered together. So these walls don't represent the church. You, as followers of Jesus, you are his church. And it happens in local expression. And so here we sit at Progression Church. You are the church. You're not at the church. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? And so Progression Church, we are led by Jesus. Jesus is the head of Progression Church. It is his church. Some of you are like, well, I thought Brian Crane and Joe Handy were leading this church, and you would be wrong. There, there are certain responsibilities that we have over this church, but it all falls beneath Jesus's authority and his role and his reign. This is Jesus's church, and here's why this is good news for you. Okay, one, uh, myself and Brian are imperfect people. We are imperfect leaders. There will be times when we fail you. There will be times when we don't come through for you. There will be times when we won't be the perfect example for you. But also, even more so, the reason this is good news is because Jesus is the greatest leader ever over the greatest movement ever. That Jesus is the greatest possible leader that you could imagine, leading the greatest movement that you could ever possibly imagine. Because that's who he is. And so understand, this is why we're constantly encouraging you to engage in your faith as much as possible. It's why we're trying to push you in the direction of growth in your walk with the Lord. But here's why. It is the greatest movement that ever existed. And so what we want you to do is we want you to engage in this movement. We want you to engage the scriptures and study it for yourself. We want you to grow in that area. We want you to dig deep into community, sharing your life with people in a meaningful way. Not because we want you to go to church, but because you are the church. And Jesus is the head over his church. And that the greatest fulfillment you can find is deeply embedding yourself into a community of people. Jesus is the leader of Progression Church. He is responsible for Progression Church. Okay, We are just under shepherds as your pastors. We answer to Jesus. And he reigns and rules over us. He has authority over us. 
But it's also important that you as an individual, you are a part of this universal body. Every believer of Christ is in the family. And you're connected to this universal body. Everybody who believes. And so, with Jesus being the greatest leader over the greatest movement, I want you to be encouraged in this way. Nothing will ever stop his movement. Nothing will ever stop Jesus' church. Nothing will ever stop. This building could crumble tomorrow and we are still the church. And we still have the same mission because we are ruled by him. And it can't be stopped. This movement cannot be stopped. We're seeing people added to the faith, added into the family, day in and day, uh, day, in and day out. And so here's why we believe that the church can't be stopped. Because that's a very, that's a bold statement. That's a bold claim. Okay? Well, here's why we can make this statement. It's the next thing that Paul says in the verse. And it's this. It says, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Here's why. Jesus rules over death itself. Not even death can stop Jesus. He rules and reigns over that. So you remember we talked about how, uh, how firstborn, when we see that word firstborn, it says that he is the firstborn over creation, right? And the word for that is prototokos. And in context, that teaches us that Jesus is preeminent over all of creation when you look at the context of the passage, and so the same thing is happening here. Some of you, you might read this and you might think, okay, here's that problem word again. What the heck does it mean that Jesus is firstborn from the dead? Okay, that just doesn't make sense if you understand it to mean a literal birth or a coming to be. It can't be. You can't come to life, for, you can't be born from death. That's not how it works. You have to live before you die. You understand? And so it doesn't mean that he's the firstborn from the dead. But what it means is Jesus, in context, he is the preeminent one over death. That he rules and he reigns over death itself. And the funny thing about death is it's pretty spot on. Okay? So the statistics would show, the numbers would show, 100% of people die. Okay? It just happens. Right? Nobody could defeat it. Nobody could conquer it. But what we have in Jesus is the greatest leader over the greatest movement. And we can be confident in that because he rules over death itself. I mean, beyond death, what could possibly have a stronger force on the human existence? It's death. And it comes for us all. But Jesus was raised from the dead. And here's the interesting thing about Jesus. He is unique. Okay, so if you know a little bit of the Bible at all, you'll understand in the Old Testament, it talks about how people were raised from the dead. We're like, how could Jesus be special? We saw other people raised from the dead, right? You see it in Lazarus. Lazarus was raised from the dead. But here's the thing. Lazarus was raised from the dead only to die again. Death, de death won. Death, it grabbed Lazarus. And took him with it. But Jesus is unique in his death. Because Jesus was the only one ever to die, be raised again, never to die again. And that he ascended into the heaven. Into the heavens. So Jesus is unique in this way. I want to illustrate it a little bit. How many of you guys have siblings? Anybody in here? You're like, I got siblings. All right, now. Next layer that we're going to get into. How many of you are a younger sibling, right? You're a younger. Okay, cool. So I am the last of three, right? They got it right third time. Okay, they took, It took them some tries, but they finally nailed it. They're just like, boom, oh, nailed it. Okay, no more, no more, okay? So being the younger sibling can come with some complications. It comes with a little bit of baggage, okay? So first of all, that first child, they do everything humanly possible to protect this child. It's like Purell 45 times a day. It's like they're covering up outlets because when you're little, you want to lick on them. You know, just things like that, right? They're doing everything they can to safeguard first child. But then the, the ladder comes, right? And then we come out and they're just like, nah, he'll be all right. But I don't even know where I lost the, I lost the plug, the little plug thing used to, to cover up the 
power outlets. It'll be all right, though. Uh, and then, they'll, you know, like, they don't want you messing with outlets, but when you're the youngest one, they're just kind of like, hey, go plug my phone charger in, right? They're just like, go play with the outlets. Play with all the outlets, right? They'll just be like, hey, man, I love you. Leave. And you're like, what? Go outside. Just go play outside. What am I going to do? Just play with a tree. I don't care. Just go, okay? I've had enough of you kids, right? The, well, probably the biggest thing that sticks out to me about being the younger sibling is you don't get to make your own fashion decisions, right? Because you inherit your, your older sibling's clothes, right? And so you're having to answer for the fashion choices of your older sibling, right? And so if you're wearing something silly looking, you're just like, yeah, man, what can I say? You know, my, my brother was really into Bugle Boy back in the day, so I wear those jeans, right? And so I actually have a picture. I used to wear Bugle Boy jeans because those were chosen for me. So this is a picture of Bugle Boy pants, right? I, how many of you remember Bugle Boy, okay? Yes, yes. Give me all the Walmart jeans, okay? And so I would wear my Bugle Boy. There was also Union Bay, okay? And I'm just like, okay, Union Bay, this is, this is where we are. This is where we find ourselves, right? Now, here's the funny thing. I was actually thinking about this and looking at this, and I'm like, some of our younger folks here, you're like, I kind of like those. I think I want to wear those, right? They're kind of in right now, right? And so you are welcome. Go Google Bugle Boy and see what they got. See if they're still ticking, okay? Um, and so we had to answer for some of the choices that our older siblings made for us, right? But it also has its perks, right? So as the younger sibling, I got to watch my brother and my sister, like, go into middle school and try and just figure it out, okay? I got to watch them go into high school and just kind of learn what it's like to be, like, the youngest grade again as they're a freshman and figuring things out. I got to watch them go to college. I never, I'll never forget about how my brother always played football before me. And so I got to actually see how it worked and you know, see some practices. And um, it's almost like he kind of pioneered. Our older siblings kind of pioneered the way for us in some things that we were unsure about. Well, the reason this connects to Jesus is we look to our brother, our big brother, Jesus. And he has pioneered the way over death for us. So what we see in the scriptures is Jesus conquering and defeating death. And here's why that's significant. Because we don't have to fear death because our big brother, Jesus, pioneered the way. He defeated it. And so when we look to him, we can know not only did Jesus die, raised, to never die again, but now we get to share in that. We get to be a part of that. Here's, a, here's another area where Paul kind of talks about this. He talks about this in Romans 6, 5, and it says this. For if we, Christians, believers, followers of Jesus, the church, for if we have been united with him... In a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And so Paul is saying that Jesus, our big brother Jesus, perfect, greatest leader that ever existed, over the greatest that ever existed, that will never be stopped. He has pioneered the way for us over death. And not only are we going to share in his death here on earth, but we're going to share in his resurrection we don't have to be afraid of what's to come. We have this living hope, this eager expectation of what's to come for us, and we can look at it with joy and hope and peace because Jesus is our big brother who pioneered the way over death for us. And now we get to care in that. We get to wear the bugle boys, right? We get to wear them loud and proud, okay? And, and some of you are literally Googling it right now, and you're shopping right now. Get me a pair if you find one, all right? Okay, so with that in mind, Jesus is the head of the church. And not only is he the head of the church, and we can be confident in that, it's, it's he has ruled over death itself. And we can have confidence in that. So what should you do? Like in light of this, how should you respond? Like, okay, Jesus rules over everything. I get it, Joe. But what does that look like on Wednesday for me? What does that look like on Thursday for me? Well, Paul shares that with us, okay? He shares that with us, okay? So let's just read the passage in its entirety, and then we'll see how it applies. It says, He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And then here's the so that. So that 
He might come to have first place in everything. So that he might come to have first place in everything. Do you see how the context is pointing us to the fact that Jesus rules over all things, even death itself? And because of that reality in our own personal lives, we are told, Paul says, so that you may be first in all things, includes your life. It includes every area of your life. And so what we tend to do is we tend to live our lives as if uh, our, our faith, our Christianity, is a category in our life. That it, that it kind of has its own little spot, and that's where it sits, and we, you know, we uh, attend the so-called church on Sundays, but when we're gathering with other believers, we do it because that's what God wants us to do. But then there are other areas of our life where we are not giving Jesus rule and reign. And it can look all kinds of different ways. But what we do is we separate things into categories. And we say, this is how I live out my faith. This is how I date. This is how I choose friends. This is how I choose my future spouse. This is how I parent. This is how I engage on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all these things. This is how I engage with people. This is how I text message. This is how, and what we do is we, we try to categorize different things in our life and we say, I love you and I'm following you and all, but you can't have this area of my life. This one belongs to me. And so here's, here's what we should do with this, and here's how we should view this. And this is what I would encourage you to do. Let Jesus be first in every part of your life. In every aspect of your life, let Jesus be first. Hey, buddy. <laughs> it sounds like it's on to me, but... All right, here we go. So, back to it. Have you guys ever heard of Where's Waldo? Anybody? <laughs> I'm just going to take it from the top. Take it from the top. Just assume you missed all of it, all right? Bet you'll be able to find him pretty quick this time. So, Jesus rules and reigns over every part of our life, and that's what I want to encourage you to do. That if he is the head of the church, and the church will never be stopped... He's preeminent over death itself. How should you respond? You respond by making, doing what Paul says, that he would have first place in everything and in every part of our life. And so I just want to ask you, are you submitting every part of who you are to Jesus? The way you interact with others, the way you work in your career, the way you deal with that person that you really don't like that much. All right, so we can come up with all kinds of excuses for why we don't have to follow Jesus in everything. And so I would just encourage you, ask yourself this question as you go throughout your day to day is, how can I honor Jesus in fill in the blank? When you find yourself in a situation how you're going to carry yourself. How can I honor Jesus in this? And just kind of live your life through the filter of that question. How will I honor Jesus? How will I honor my big brother, Jesus? And here's why I think you should do it. Because you have a choice to make when you leave here. I can't make the choice for you. Brian can't make the choice for you. Here's why we think you should. The greatest possible way to live your life is under, it's found beneath the rule and reign of Jesus. It's the happiest you're going to ever be. It's the freest you're going to ever be. It sounds counterintuitive to some of us. We're just like, wait a minute, how am I more free if I'm under the rule of somebody? It's because Jesus is the greatest possible leader over the greatest possible movement. Nothing will stop it, and he invites you to be a part of that movement. And so what is that area that you need to submit I just want to invite you guys just where y'all are. I mean, hopefully you've heard, you know, some of my message. <laughs> but I want to invite you just right where you are. Let's just be still. Let's just take a moment 
to ask this question. Am I submitting every part of my life to the rule and reign of Jesus? Just kind of search. Do some work with the Holy Spirit. Is there an area of my life where I've just kind of pushed Jesus out? And as the Holy Spirit just reveals that to us, some of you guys, you were thinking of that thing. Like it came to mind. And you're like, stay away from this, Joe. Stay away from this. Well, what we know is the Holy Spirit is likely speaking to you about that area. It's convicting you over that area. And so if you're a follower of Jesus, here's what I would encourage you to do. Lay that at his feet. Confess that to the Lord. A lot of times we think of it as this big, terrible sin. It can even be in the small things. The way I manage my schedule doesn't really reflect honor towards Christ. Prioritizing my my time with Him, investing and growing in my faith, the way you're approaching that, does it honor Christ? Are you making Him first in everything? And so that's for the believers. And so what I want to encourage you to do is right now just do work with the Lord. Talk to Him. Confess that to Him. He is a good Father who will forgive you. He has the grace to do it. He always gives it. But then there's others of us in the room. And we may not have a relationship with Jesus. When we talk about a relationship with Jesus, it's when you have decided that you're going to follow Him. You're going to follow him. You're going to believe upon him for the forgiveness of sins. The gospel is the message of Jesus overcoming our sins so that we could have a relationship with God. And if you want to know what it's like to be a Christian, if you want to know and understand what it's like to follow Jesus as you make that decision and believe upon him, that's what the scriptures tell us. Jesus, I accept your free gift of salvation. And so just right where you are, I want you just to express that to God. If you would say, listen, I don't, I don't think I'm a believer. I don't know that I'm a follower of Jesus. Maybe you have a cultural understanding of Christianity, but you don't know Jesus personally. And so if that's you, just pray something like this. Lord, I confess my sin to you. You, you are not first to me but I accept your leadership. I accept your rule. I accept your reign in my life. And I want to follow you. I'm believing upon Jesus.